Hello there. I would like to talk about this idea of uh, refusing to acknowledge the part that you play in harm that takes place. So whether you like it or not, you are part of the collective. What that is, I don't want to go into, but it's a fascinating topic. What is the collective? There is the family collective, uh, a community collective, an organization collective, a town, village, or city collective, a state collective, a country collective. And even if you refuse to acknowledge your position in any one of these collectives that are all virtually human-made, you cannot deny the fact that you are part of the universal collective of Earth-dwelling inhabitants human beings who live on earth. I'm sorry if that's hard for you to hear, but you are in fact a part of a collective. And even the hermits in the woods are part of a collective. Even them. Very interesting in itself to consider. Well, we can talk about the harm that you cause another directly, you yourself. You know, you can punch somebody in the cheek. You can punch someone's cheek. And that is um, blatant harm. But what I would like to talk about is the more indirect mode It's not ultimately indirect, it's ultimately direct, but the indirect mode of um, harm, as in a war being caused. So the United States is behind a lot of the war that rages on, on the planet. And right now we are heavily involved in the slaughter of Palestinians. Uh, sometimes I like to take a pause because I know things that I say are so, like, difficult to hear. And on that, I just want to pause. I don't know how long I want to pause, just a, an amount of time that I find compelling. I also find it difficult to um, segue to next thought. I mean, that's like, you know, maybe I should just say that again. Uh, Americans are directly involved in slaughtering Palestinians. We're also involved in uh, killing Russians. Um, By our actions, um, Ukrainians are also being killed because we're fomenting a war over there. But yeah, there's a lot of quote-unquote, indirect harm being caused by the wars that we are creating. There's a lot of um, killing and maiming and injuries that we are causing. Um, A lot, a lot of emotional pain that we are causing. And I don't mean soldiers. I don't mean generals. I don't mean the president. I mean every single American, even if you're not a soldier, even if you've never been a soldier, even if you've never attended a memorial or, you know, you've been part of a Veterans Day event, I don't know where the line is. So for me, I've been, in my own (laughs) imagination, I've been anti-war for years. And ultimately, I do think I'm a little bit more anti-war than the average Joe. Because people are specifically unwilling to say that it's a bad idea. Or at least unwilling to contemplate it. 
I think everyone at some point has contemplated whether it's evil or good to go to war. But a lot of people have kind of gone past contemplation and have made the decision that it's it's good sometimes. And I'm more willing to say, no, it it seems like it's never good. But at the same time, while I, you know, make little videos, little nonsense videos that argue against war, I have to acknowledge that my lifestyle, my decisions are contributing to the slaughter of Palestinians, for instance. And I don't know where that line is. I don't know what the line is. I feel like I ingratiate myself by saying that I am a little bit better. And it's kind of disgusting. Honestly, I felt the the grossness of that of late. Because I kind of thought, you know, things might change if I talk about it. If one person stands up. And they haven't. They aren't. Things are not changing. We are continuing to go to war. And I feel like there is a general, like, drumbeat that is continuing towards an even greater escalation of war. And even if there isn't, like, a, a so-called greater escalation, um, generally there seems to be no interest in lessening these wars, you know? I'd like to see the end of the military. And and just as I say that, you know, there's some questioning. There's some questioning of how accurate that statement is. I've been questioning the accuracy of my statements. But it's nice, let me put it this way, this is more correct. It's nice to think about the end of the military. It's nice to think that people can drop their arms. There's, a, of course, you know, a quote from Jesus in the military, turn your swords into plowshares. Every time I hear that quote, I'm like, I'm buoyed. I'm, I'm uplifted by it. I'd love to see that. I'd love that to be a part of my generation, where people collectively decide that we don't need to ever take up arms against anybody. We don't need to create weapons. You know, even if we don't want to even if we don't want to stop completely being violent to each other, we could at least say no more weapons. If you want to hurt somebody, you have to punch them and kick them or bite them, but you can't shoot them, you can't cut them, you can't use a tool, you can't bludgeon them. You know, you have to use your own weight to hurt them. At least that would be a little bit better. <laughs> it wouldn't be a lot better, but, you know, a lot better would be just, it's never a right to bruise. Like, let's, let's, let's make that the standard. Don't ever bruise anybody. Don't ever cut anybody. Don't ever pierce anybody. Don't ever break any bone or, um, tear any ligament or vital um, internal structure. Now I say that and and I believe that you can grapple. I believe that you can hold. I believe you can restrain. But if your restraining becomes a bruising or or something that turns into, you know, a ligament snapping or, you know, severe muscular damage or Anything like that, that's that's the end. You shouldn't you shouldn't go past that. Now there's as I say that, you know, I find all these ideas interesting, so I end up, you know <sighs> I end up as I as I talk about these things, I end up finding more things I want to talk about and I, I feel like I can meander a little bit, but you know, you don't have to watch my videos. My I've tried for years to stop the meandering process. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. <laughs> it 
anyway, so here's another meandering, right? Let's say you're restraining somebody. I, I actively restrained my nephew once. And they hurt themselves in the process of you restraining them. In other words, you're holding on to them and they uh, are pushing so hard against you that they end up hurting themselves. I don't think at that point you are hurting them. I don't, I think they're, it's kind of like themselves like hitting their head against the wall on their own accord. You know, they could pull so hard against restraint that they hurt themselves. And I don't believe that that's now you doing that to them. You are not hurting them. You are not bruising them. You are not tearing a ligament or breaking a bone. If they're um, pushing or pulling so hard against your restraint that they end up hurting themselves. But that can be something that could be discussed. I want to discuss all these things. I want to talk about these things. I want to investigate these topics. I want to know the limits of violence. I, I, I think this is a fascinating area of study. You know, instead of like... <laughs> Instead of creating more lethal bombs, we could we could discuss martial arts and the ethics of um, physical harm. Uh, and I would say, of course, there's no ethics to any kind of physical harm. But we could discuss the ethics of um, restraint, I guess is a better way to put it. So anyway, back to my point. <laughs> Refusing to acknowledge the part that you play. I am seeing how I myself am a part of this machine. I'm a part of the military industrial complex. I mean, I'll give you an example. I, I'm obsessed. I'll, I'll be crude here and say I, I jerk myself off to videos online of... People talking about how horrible um, Israel's part to play is in the war in Israel. Or how horrible it is that w what Americans are doing in Israel. And that's partly, I think, because I want to be informed. And partly, it's because I like to hear these stories. I like to hear these narratives. And what these narratives boil down to is it's the U.S. officials who are doing it. It's the Israeli officials that are doing it. The people don't want it. It's the officials. These people are insane. These people going to war, they're insane. These generals, they're insane. These admirals, these Air Force, whatever the... Name of the top people there is called. They're insane. It's the war cabinet. They're insane. It's the people in the military industrial complex. They're insane. And I know at this point, I, I'm not dumb enough to assume that it's just the people in power who are at fault for what goes on in the world. It's not the corporate heads. It's not your manager. It's not the boss. It's not... You know, the president, it's not the chief, it's not the colonel, it's not the lieutenant, it's not anybody who's in power. If you think that the problems in your life are caused by people in authority, you are way off, my brother or sister. You're completely off. You're, you're way off base. And you're allowed to be off base. I don't even know what that means to be off base, but there's a base and you're off of it and you're way off of it and you're just chilling off of the base. Maybe there's a ball game and you're supposed to be on the base and you're just like, you're like, I don't want to be on that base and you're just way off. You're not even on the field. You're, you're like walking out of the park and it's a large park and we're watching you. Like I thought he was on, I thought he was playing. What, what is he? Yeah. He's always been a little strange. You know, he's always wanted to be, you know, a little weird. And he's talked about not be, you know, we've all heard him say he doesn't want to be on this team. His mom made him play on this team. 
And so we all know that he's not like fully there. We've been encouraging him to stay. Maybe he's just had enough. Maybe he's done. And he's he just walked off. You just walked right off. You just walked away. You're walking away. You're staying in your power and you're walking away. You're completely off base, brother or sister. If you think the powers in the world, the so-called authority figures, are the ones to blame for any one of your problems in your life. If you're an adult, if you're past your teenage years, and you would like to spend your time blaming other people for your problems, you're off base. Even I can see that I am the cause of my problems. I can't completely see that. I'm like coming into that understanding and awareness more and more. But even I will admit that I'm completely like, you know, without a rudder with these things. Like, I just heard AJ talk the other day about (sighs) recognizing emotionally that you are sinning and that you want to sin. You know, earlier this year, I, I... I wrote down in my notes that, like, I thought it was so profound when I heard AJ say, and of course, all these things I've heard, and I I recommend re-watching Divine Truth of videos, because a lot of times you'll hear something and it it just won't go in. It will not go in. And I'll hear it a second, it takes me sometimes three times that I hear it before I get it. And it's not just the repetition, of course, but it's also, like, I think you have to go through things. You have to actively consider. You have to contemplate. You have to go through some emotional changes to be able to accept what he's saying. But he said the following. He said, like, you're angry and you want to be. And I know that I've heard that before, but it didn't hit me until I heard it that second or third time that I heard it. I want to be angry. I want it. I want it. I actively pursue my own anger. I prefer it. I use it. I utilize the anger like possibility. I know that I can control other people if I'm angry. Some people who are weak enough to accept that, I possibly can't control them. And so I... Walk in the direction of being angry, and I use my own angry anger in order to control people. Because I don't want to deal with my own stuff, and so I'd rather just be angry. And I think that's so freaking profound. And in much the same way, any one of our sins, of course, we don't want to accept, we, we don't want to think that we have sins, that we do sin. Some people totally, like, are just, like, upset with you bringing up the word sin, and, oh my God, the people, like, the, oh, the, the amount of times I've heard, well, you know, to be happy, you have to know what it is to be sad. You ha- to, to experience freedom, you have to know what it is to be handicapped or to be freaking, I don't know, tortured or something. So, so you want me to feel like all kinds of torment and suffering and then I'll be happy? Is that what you're saying? I find that argument so stupid. What people are arguing when they're saying that is basically like this this dark light. Well, we have to have the dark in order to have the light. You see, you can't have one without the other. It's this new age bull crap that I can hardly stand anymore. In fact, I'm less and less interested when I hear people say that. What, what I do also find is that these same people will, you know, they, they refuse to wor- use the word evil, but they'll say things like, oh, that's just so totally off. You know, there was something off about that. I don't, you know. It used to be everyone would say negative, you know, and now people don't use the word negative anymore so much because, you know, um, it still evokes this idea of negative and positive. And um, you have to have a negative ion or whatever in every single atom or whatever. I don't know exactly how it works, but, you know, atomically negativity is essential. But... You know, we had a time where people people were using that term negative. Now they're not using that so much anymore. But people will come up with all kinds of words without using the word sin, without using the word evil. 
you know. And they just want to avoid the entire idea that there is error, there is wrongness, there is unlovingness. There are people like it's it's like <sighs> you have to do a series of mental flips to to say that darkness is like a good thing and I'm not, I'm not talking about like the absence of light I'm talking about the absence of love here of course but you have to do a series of mental flips to actually believe that like darkness is somehow good the evil is somehow good it's not it's just not and I'm increasingly disinterested in uh, tolerating the opinion that it is that in order for there to be, you know, a light, there must be a dark. I hear the argument all the time, and I hear that argument, that same argument being, you know, uh, uh, contradicted in one's own speech. So they'll say, well, you have to have a dark and you have to have a light. And then they'll say, but this person was just totally off. I mean, I can't believe they did what they just did. Well... Why can't you? I mean, if it's dark, maybe it's a good thing. You know, it's just <laughs> anyway. That's a whole thing, and I'm I'm, and I'm currently I'm going to pause this because I don't know where I am and what I want to say. No, I'm not going to pause it. I'm just going to keep on going. Screw it. Um, maybe I'll come back to it. Maybe I won't. This is going to be a long one. I think. I think this is going to go thirty minutes. Um, hopefully you got something out of that. I might never resolve that point, but um. Yeah, I think I'll go somewhere else and then I, I probably will come back to that and resolve it. I've done that before. I find that interesting. Sometimes I'll be like towards the end of a video and I'm like, this is too long. I don't want to keep on going. And then like at the end, I'll be like, oh, I remember that point. And then I'm able to resolve it. And I think that will happen here too. So anyway, in my own life, I'm seeing how I, as a part of the collective, you know, I can bang pots and... um you know, create a a fuss over how horrible war is. And and I see a lot of people who are, quote unquote, you know, pro protesting and they think they're being peaceful and they think they're doing the loving thing. And. And I, I mark, I acknowledge and notice my own anger in. In. um the the absolute disinterest that people have like i don't know i think there's a part of me that assumed that people would like wake up to how stupid war is i grew up in this church that was very much um uh idealizing the ideal i don't know how to say it but like there there was this utopian vision in mind Call me, you know, crazy, but I, I still feel like utopia is possible. I don't want to quiet that instinct inside of myself. Everybody around me seems to want to. Every time I talk about how, hey, maybe, uh, whatchamacallit, perfection is possible. I think it's the same idea. You know, a perfect world, a perfect human being. If you believe that, if you believe in a perfect world, you'd have to believe in a perfect human being. A perfect world would conceivably be occupied by perfect human beings, as the only beings with free will in that world. You would have to have the perfection of those beings in order for it to be perfect. Now, of course, you could say that the world is the Earth is already perfect. The design that God has created. Um is already perfect. And I, I kind of believe that already, but so you actually do have imperfect beings like messing up a perfect system. But what I'm saying here is, um, if a perfect world, like if, if you had a world where everyone was working in harmony with the laws that are instituted here in this reality, in this world, on this earth, in this universe, if everyone was actually working with those laws, you'd see a 
a, a, a world, a perfect world, functioning perfectly, functioning, functioning as it should, or, or I should better say, functioning optimally. I think we have a perfect world functioning, fun functioning in optimally. <laughs> huh, I'm even finding trouble with that. Like it's not fully optimal right now because the inputs that we are uh, generating or whatever into the system are creating um, bad outputs. And that's part of the law. We have negative consequences for negative actions. Unloving, con well, correcting, I should say, consequences for unloving actions. And that's, co that's commensurate with the law. But we could have positive actions and have positive outcomes. And um, then you'd have a perfect world um, operating optimally, which we don't have currently. So, so I, 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 you know, I would like to still believe that perfection is possible for the human being as well as for the, for the world, a world full of perfect human beings would, you know, working optimally would be an exciting world to be in, to be living in. And, and I perhaps foolhardily believed that people by now would say, hey, oh, you know, yeah, you know what? This war stuff is pretty stupid. Maybe we should just, maybe we should really consider stopping killing. Maybe we should just say, you know what? Killing's always wrong. It's always wrong. And we should take, we should attempt to remedy violence by other means, other methods. People do turn their lives lives around. There is legitimate evidence to people turning their lives around. And it's not through um, violence every time. I would argue it's never through violence. I would argue that sometimes violence can be a negative response or consequence to one's um, unloving actions. In other words, you could be like a violent person that continues to choose to hang around other violent people. And then you can find yourself, you know, choosing not to hang around violent people. And all, all of a sudden, lo and behold, you discover less violence in your life. So, yeah. I don't know if I, I made that point well, but... Um, The whole point of this video is to discuss and go into this idea of, um, like, even I myself, I think I'd like to, as I said earlier, I'd like to ingratiate myself and believe that I'm not, that, I, that I'm helping in a profound way. At least I'm sticking up for the truth. Um, but if I was put in a situation where, you know, um, the comforts that I enjoy are threatened if I was ever um, threatened with violence or torture or um, if someone threatened to take my things I don't own very much but <laughs> even the few things that I do own I I like I would like to continue to own if someone were to threaten my life or um, my status or my um, things, I would relent. I would, you know, I'm like Barbie. You know, she's she she can take the. I thought that was so well done in that movie where. You know, she's given like the she she has a red pill or blue pill moment, where she can choose the path towards enlightenment, or remain in her cookie cutter ignorant world and she's like oh definitely let's i definitely want to remain in the in in ignorance please i, I definitely choose the ignorance absolutely no question you know like that's that's what i choose 
And if I was ever, if, if some of these things I mentioned were ever threatened for me, I would say, you know what, maybe war is okay. You know, I'm, I'm very comfortable in my life right now. And in my comfort, I say, war is bad. <laughs> Meanwhile, I am contributing to war privately, quietly. I think the, the God and the whole spirit world can obviously see the direct connections between, like, like the, the, the direct connection between my own sin and error inside of my own soul and um, the slaughter that's going on in Palestine. The, the, I don't think it's quite so much a slaughter in Ukraine, but it's, it's close. Um, in other places, especially in Africa, I think there's a lot of wars going on in, uh, West Asia, which are, some people are starting to call the Middle East. Um, there's still a lot of conflict and I'm contributing to all of that. I'm today now contributing to a lot of violence across the world. And it's not just... War, it's also banal, painful, constant, um, soul-destroying work. I want people to stay up late and not get a lot of sleep, slaving away to create the things that I enjoy. The food... The uh, materials, the machines that I consume and use, uh, the clothes that I wear, the, the, the niceties in my home, I want people to slave away. And that might be worse. There's, a, there's an argument to say that that's worse. But I am currently, right now, contributing to violence and pain and suffering in the lives of others across the world, and I honestly don't give a damn. I could care less. I care a little bit. And I don't care a lot. And uh, I'm swept up by, you know, these uh these videos. I, I'm in I'm in a uh what would you call it? I'm in this inertia you know, I, I, the algorithm, because I, I've looked into, you know, I wanted to hear more about what's going on in Israel. So I watched one video and I didn't want to watch the video that's like pro-Israeli because I'm totally against what they're doing. I'm at least on the side where I'm against what they're doing. They're the bigger power and they're, um, and, and maybe I can't even say that. I can't even, as I say it, I, I see a problem with the way I'm phrasing it. <sighs> I'll put it this way. I don't want to watch the pro-Israel videos. I want to watch the uh, anti-Israel videos. And I'm I'm in this loop of videos and scrolling through my feed on YouTube. And YouTube generates all these videos that give me updates about what's going on in Israel and Palestine. And... Um, and I, I'm part of this collective of people that, that believe that they're contributing. And I am, I'm basically angrily um, doing my own protest, comfortably in my own home, you know, trying to get more information about what's going on. Somewhere in my heart, I know that I'm contributing. Somewhere in my heart, I know that um, people are talking about ceasefire but there really is no intention for it to have a ceasefire. The dominating power does not want that to happen. And I am, of course, contributing to that. I don't want to do what is required for significant change to happen. I don't want to do what's required in myself. I don't want to take the steps to change you know, the sin that's inside of myself that's helping to contribute to what's going on. And I guess this brings me to my final point, which is that you have the people such as myself who would like to call for an end to war, or at least this war, the one that I've been talking about throughout this video, the one that I've been um, 
honing in on um, the Israel and Palestinian conflict, Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Um, and, and they talk about it and they, they say it's wrong while they are contributing to it. And there's an essential hypocrisy in that. And I'm finding myself to be absolutely, absolutely a part of that camp. I'm a part of that. Those I'm, I'm with those people. I am saying it's wrong and I am contributing to it. And so really, I wonder if I should say anything at all. Maybe I should just keep my mouth shut. Maybe I should say alternatively that I, I, I support it. I actually support what Israel is doing in Palestine. Maybe I should stop watching these videos. You know, maybe that would be more honest and appropriate and would help better. I don't know. But um, I'm alarmed at the hypocrisy I see in the world. I'm alarmed at my own hi hypocrisy. I'm alarmed at the people that are saying, this is so wrong, what's going on, what these officials are doing. And they would like to refuse absolutely their own fault in the entire story. And it's kind of grossing me out.